Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. Fancy yourself as a thought leader or you want to actually make a name for yourself in this industry? You're going to need these two things that I'm going to talk about in this podcast in order for you to stand out in your saturated place. Now, I want you to be clear about one thing. I do not want you to fall for the fake it till you make it trap. That trap is basically left to the fake gurus and fake bro marketers out there who haven't actually made a single cent in their marketing. If you want to be a thought leader and thought leaders, especially who are in a position to make and change the world around them and make influence or be influential and build connections with their audiences, authenticity and consistency are vital to this. Now, you might have heard of the mantra, fake it until you make it. And it's an expression that's very prevalent in the online space where people are just uh, uh, saying, hey, here in my backyard, I'm doing this or rent out a Ferrari or they rent out a Rolls Royce or they go to Airbnb and rent out a place and then trick it out as if it's their office. And eventually they've got zero dollars, zero credibility, no audiences. And people like that are actually trying to make a living online. I know you've heard it, you've seen it, and you've probably been told by people that you trust. And this statement of fake it until you make it, it actually expresses the idea that you should embody maybe some confidence or persona that you might not actually possess. Let me tell you something, man. We live in the most documented generation where whatever you do at 8 a.m. would be somebody's tweet or screenshot at 8.05. And that's already a little bit late with the way things are happening in the world right now. And I totally disagree with the whole notion that you should fake it until you make it. I believe you should be very authentic and be consistent and actually show people and document your journey instead of trying to be that which you're not. Because guess what? You're just going to be caught out, you know? At the end of the day, it's just nothing beats being positively remarkable for the right reasons. You know, if people talk about you in a positive way, your marketing budget actually reduces to zero, right? You want to replace your marketing budget with an actual remarkable budget. That means you have to be honest. You have to deliver on your promises. You actually have to create relationships in order for people to remark on you and to speak about you at a barbecue. Now, there's this whole traditional marketing where they believe, build it, and they'll come. And and I think the advertising that comes along with it is it's not as important as it once was. That used to work on television, and television is tell lie vision. All right. There's a lot of lies that um, you know, got through television. You know why? Because that's the programs and programming that they wanted people to aspire to back in that time. Now, if you come into my household, I think there's four people which um, comprises of two adults and two kids. But I kid you not, we've got about 16 screens amongst us. Some of them are TV, some of them are laptops, um, of which I think I hold the most. But I digress. We are all watching four or five different programs at the same time. It's no longer programming that used to happen before where everybody was wearing the same clothes, was eating the same food, was shopping at the same shops and going to the same dentist. 
Because they used to say nine out of ten dentists believe in some sort of toothpaste and everybody fell for that. That traditional marketing has gone and leave it back where it actually belongs. What matters most right now and in the future is having a product or business and services that are worth talking about. You know, you, you have a smartphone, which I basically think you are listening to this podcast from. Or if it's not from a smartphone, it is in your pocket. Everybody has one of those. And every friend you've ever met on social media platforms is obviously just waiting to either give you advice or receive advice from some sort of guru or some sort of person. All right. So it is a duty and an obligation and a privilege to actually appear in people's news feeds because everybody's taking what we're saying as coaches, consultants, and small business owners, the bottom. So if you can't do it for yourself, do it for the people that are listening and paying attention to your words. You have to be honest. You really have to be putting advice and content out there that is not just designed to get you rich and famous or whatever you call it these days. And nobody gets rich and famous using, um, you know, dubious methods these days because you get caught out. You get caught out. All right. You know, and, and add to that, we can see that there's a lot of reviews, there's a lot of blogs or ratings and other relevant data that people can actually see that you are not honest or you are not truthful in your words. So the problem now with uh, traditional marketing in the current climate is you might be marketing to just your competition. They're the only people that have an understanding of what you're saying um, and the words or the jargon that you might be using and your actual audience is just waiting for people that are authentic out there, people that are people at heart before they start, you know, uh, pushing their products and services. I want you to imagine this scenario. You know, you might think, oh, okay, let me use um, maybe, you know, search engine optimization to fake my authority where I'm ranking high for certain keywords and you, you're you beating yourself in a chest um, in a pub in New South Wales or maybe in Perth there, wherever you are. Let's say, let, let's give an example of maybe you are a a computer repair consultant or you are IT technician and maybe you run an electronics company and you take out an ad or you start ranking for, um, you know, uh, computer service repairs Perth or something ridiculous like that. And you have, you know, maybe one of your pages that says, um, we are the best in the industry or something of that nature. So maybe somebody reads that. All right. And then they start thinking, wait a minute, I've got problems with my computer or I've got problems with my equipment. And they read your ad or they read your landing page or whatever post that you would have put out there, which is a fake post and fake news, like according to Trump. And maybe they have um, a problem with their computer and they're looking for somebody who can actually help them. Guess what happens? Their next move is where everything goes wrong for you that has faked your um you know hierarchy or your authority and this this if you're not taking heed to this i want you to actually start taking notice guess what happens maybe that person went on and googled uh computer repairs perth or computer repairs sydney and your uh website came up and then they discover that you know maybe Amongst the people that are advertising there, there's also yet another online um, service that just offers a free diagnostic tool. They first of all saw your page, but they're now going to go to somebody who's offering instant value or just maybe an easier step into working with them. And you faked your way to a high ranking, but you are now helping your competitors who have done the work to actually get this lead. Here's how it's going to happen. Um, you know, they, the, your, your leaders typed in, you know, computer repairs and then they go in and then there's somebody who's offering maybe a report or, you know, like a diagnostic tool which they can use immediately. And everyone is raving about this place online. And then they discover that, you know, maybe that l you, that leading computer person on, um, you know, is being, is not being recommended by as many people than somebody who's written a blog about it. 
Who is this customer going to patronize? Somebody who's written content about it or somebody who's just ranking and is not providing any further details on how to work. So guess what they will do? They're going to take whatever information that they saw on a blog or on that little diagnostic tool, and then they will write maybe on their Facebook asking their friends who is the most recommended computer repairman or IT consultant. Yeah. And then when they do do that, their friends are going to tweet back or maybe respond back, you know, giving them yet another, yet other options, which are not yourself because you haven't done the work. You haven't put content out there for people to uh, recommend you. So yes, you're paying for the adverts. Yes, you're paying for the SEO and you're thinking people are going to come to you. And yes, you might be getting a bit of work, but you are not the most remarkable. You're not the person who your customer's friends are going to be recommending because you've got nothing for them to go by. And being remarkable is not just about offering stupid uh, gimmicks or pointland, point, pointland uh, stunts that, um, you know, just to get uh, uh, clients through the door. It's about being the best in your niche or in your micro niche and you're offering genuine advice and advantages um, that your customers are searching for with real and tangible benefits. You're not just selling the sizzle, you're actually selling the steak and you're doing it with grace and, and panache. And most of all, it's about being authentically caring about what you do and being in a class of your own. Because you might think that, yes, ranking is going to be the bead and end all, but there are people that are doing reviews online. There are people that are doing podcasts like this that are showing and, and helping people by actually helping them. How are you going to compete with somebody who has more content than you have, um, even if you're ranking high on, on Google there? So you, as the, you know, the IT consultant there, you might pay for the advert or for the SEO but it's not going to give you the right clients that are actually the client of today. And it doesn't mean that if you're being premium or, or being high end, that's the means for people to seek you out. You can be remarkable for your innovative approach or just remarkably fair deals. You know, you could be remarkably cheap if that's your point of difference, because there's people like Walmart and Kmart that are well known for being the lowest prices in town, you know? And you can be remarkable for your service, how far you are willing to go to make your customers happy. So when people are asking, who should I buy from? Is your name the one that comes up? Is your name remarkable? Because your business must start investing more money into the products and your customer service um, to in order for those customers to be ambassadors for you in the future. And you should actually lessen the budget into advertising in, in, in a lot of these traditional forms of marketing because they're not the last mile that your customers are actually going in order to search um, for the right person to give them the services that they're looking for. Because businesses that are remarkable profitable and enjoyable. They actually spend money on their existing customers before they spend money on their prospective ones, right? A lot of people are spending a lot of money trying to bring people in, but do nothing to keep them. It actually costs a lot more money to um, attract an, a new client than it is for you to keep the ones that you already have. And it, it does sound counterintuitive, but if you get it right, your existing customers are going to go out and do the marketing for you because you haven't faked it until you made it. You actually went in and helped them by actually helping them, right? And I would go as far as say, I think you should actually take at least 50% of your traditional marketing budget and transfer it to a remarkable budget doing podcasts like this, putting content out there because people are coming to the internet to get information. And if your brand is not providing that information, then obviously you're just as good as faking it out there because you are not actually offering value that people can take home or you to the bank. So if you do, your products will sell. And because people will now 
want to spend money, um, you know, with you because you've helped them actually solve a problem that must was keeping them up at night. So how do you then provide value out there in the marketplace? Honesty is the greatest, greatest, um, you know, equalizer. Because look at your business right now. No business is ever smooth sailing. So if you're worried about what content to put out there, just look at what are you actually embarrassed about right now? What are you struggling with? Which you are, um, you know, you, you are trying to alleviate and what are you doing about that? Because I kid you not, the moment you tap into that, there are other people that are seeking for that information or seeking for that uh, shortcut. And you just so happen to have the answers and you just so happen to have the experience because your life story and your experience are the greatest differentiator in this marketplace. I kid you not. Everybody knows if you're a digital marketer, you got to target your market. You got to clarify your message. You got to tweet or put it on social media, etc., etc. But if you don't have stories and if you don't have honesty around what you're actually going through, no one is going to be paying attention to your work. And that's why some people would rather just pay um, an agency to do their marketing for them just so they don't get involved because they've got no good story to tell. Pay attention to where you're at right now because where you are is where a lot of people would be in a year or two to come and you would just provide them with a blueprint that actually happens to be the thing that will save them and help them be, do, and have a happier existence. You know, maybe, <laughs> maybe sometimes it's just better to keep quiet and not be so brutally honest because a lot of people, truth hurts, man. But in some situations, especially in the professional environment, you just might want to avoid being quiet. And I'm not saying put out your personal life out there. You know, you want to avoid getting into your personal life. But if it is also helping you in, such, in, 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 in a way, why not? Because that's where other humans can actually connect with you. You know, while there are moments where you should have maybe clear boundaries, you know, there are also moments when you can actually feel comfortable sharing things about yourself, you know? I'm coming from a digital marketing background and I see a lot of personal experiences in the way that I connect with others, which is essential for my thought leadership. Some of my clients, when I deal with them, I don't ask them how much revenue they want to make. I ask them what they want to have for their family in five years. You know how many people tell me they want to do a cruise, they want to uh, take their family on a holiday, and we start working towards that. You know why? Because that's what's more important to people than profit. I mean, obviously, profit is important, but it's, it's more important than money. So when you go in and you confide about your own life, it's much more personal. And you actually start sharing commonality with other people because as a coach or consultant, you're already taken in high esteem by other people. So you want to just bring people to your, um, humanize your brand, so to speak. And when you confide in your own life, you share your own stories, people will find the human aspect of your brand. You know, sometimes I use my family or my kids or even my father as an example when I tell stories about him or, 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 or my family or where I came from, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it, it actually makes me more real and authentic than if we're using somebody who's distant or unrelated to me. Like if I keep quoting Albert Einstein. You know, people better connect with what I'm saying and they see that it's actually closer to home and how I'm actually operating my business and breathing the same air that they are instead of thinking that I'm this untouchable uh, human. You know, of course, yes, I'm the founder and CEO of Live Long Digital where I help businesses explode in growth using digital marketing. But it wasn't always like this. You know, I, I'm really, really passionate about helping coaches and consultants and small business owners grow their business because that's what happened to me. I came from nothing. You see, I was born in a small town in Zimbabwe in Africa, and I don't know if you know where that is, but it's in the southern part of Africa. And growing up, life was pretty tough. You know, we didn't have a lot of money or have what, uh, you know, any role models or things like that. And there was nothing to look forward to because the whole culture around us was just dependent on corruption and just a lot of uh, poverty and everything else that comes along with it. Now, 
here comes a teacher um, when I was 13 years and that's when my life changed. You know, this bright eyed Australian teacher who came to work at our school and she told me about Australia and all the incredible opportunities that were there to offer. That now became my anchor. That now became who I am now today because she taught me that no matter where you are, no matter who you are in the world, yeah, you too can be, do, and have whatever you want. And, you know, we live in a world with infinite possibilities for people who actually dream big and have the courage to follow their dreams. And for the rest of my time in school, I worked my butt off just to learn as much as I could. And then in 2021, that's when I jumped on a plane and I landed in Australia. And when I came here, I had nothing but a backpack full of hopes and dreams. You know what? It was tough, bro. It was tough. You know, so far away from my family and my friends and I struggled just to find regular work and pay my bills. And, you know, I was even evicted in one of the apartments that I lived in in Richmond. You know, that was like one of my lowest points. But you know what? I never gave up. So you could be going through stuff right now. You might not even know that people like me have also been there. But after me telling you my story like I just did, Guess what happens? You now start getting the courage to say, you know what, if he can do it, somebody from Africa comes to Australia with nothing. Well, I grew up around here. I've got an alumni. I've got family. I've got people I can count on. And one other thing in, in your work, don't be afraid to be vulnerable. You know what I mean? Because when you're vulnerable, that's when you bring out your actual um, person in you. You know... <laughs> If you watch my video with Carl Stefanovic, and I, I urge you to look it up, um, www.livelongdigital.com.au forward slash T-T-N-Y, which is this time next year. Check it out. There's a video of me and Carl Stefanovic when I'm talking about this teacher, and I actually cry in all the episodes, man, because to me, it was so real. My daughter was there. My wife was there. And... Nothing else mattered when my daughter cried, you know, and Carl was like, yeah, should we bring the, your little girl on stage? And then I, I just I just couldn't handle the emotion. There I was in bright lights, my family, everything I'd worked towards was just there. And, and I feel like that video is where my biggest break came, came, came there. Because after that, I started getting a lot of calls and people saying, oh, my God, this was the best uh, TV show I've watched, etc., etc." And before you know it. We're here now, right? So it's okay to actually own your mistakes. We all fail, you know what I mean? It's okay to own who you are. It's okay to own your story. Nobody is right all the time. And we are all human beings just seeking other human beings to show us the way home. And when you talk about your past errors or your struggles and, you know, just analyze them and share what you've learned, it actually shows your personal growth because everybody's always looking for that one person who is growing. We are human beings. We've got a growth trajectory in our, we are hardwired to grow because if you're not growing, you die. Look at a tree. If a tree is not growing, it is dying. And it's only us human beings that don't, that have the choice not to actually take on our personal growth uh, seriously. Because look at plants and animals. No matter what happens to a plant or an animal, it will grow. It will grow to its maximum possible um, you know, capacity unless predators eat it or something like that. So when people read your experiences, when people uh, read your stories, they can actually see themselves in those stories and start noticing similar patterns in their own lives. I bet you were looking for similarities when I was talking about my story and how I came to Australia. You know, they might start understanding your challenges and actually find wisdoms in the lessons that you'll be imparting to them at that particular time. And when you actually start revealing your personal stories, it shows that you're an honest person and you actually give people a chance to connect with you because at least they now know there's some human behind the facade. That's why we say if you fake it, you don't give an opportunity to other people to actually connect with you. So you're only not cheating them. You're cheating yourself of future prospects, connections, and partners that would actually make your business remarkable, profitable, and enjoyable. 
all right? So you want to reveal your personal stories. You want to bring in with your own flair of, 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 of your own, you know, flavor of who you are and who you've become. And it just shows your honesty and it gives people that opportunity to actually connect with you. And connection leads to trust. And for you to do that, everyone is busy out there. You got to be consistent and consistency is key. You know, even... Even the smallest fibs in your storytelling can actually harm your credibility. All right? Because people would look you up and fact finding and, you know, you don't want Trump, you know, sitting across the table going, fake news, fake news, fake news. Because we are building each and every single day. We're building our credibility. You know, it takes years and years and years to build and craft a trustworthy um, persona or, you know, a, a... reputation but it takes a millisecond for you to actually harm your credibility so when you have so much going on it can be very difficult to remember you know every single lie that you tell so just tell the truth so that you don't have to remember what you say and this will lead to a lot of inconsistency and once people start noticing you know a few red flags here and there people check out And if you're telling a different story each time, people will wonder what's true and what's actually not. And audiences and readers, they tend not to buy into sources that are not reliable, unless you're the government. But I did not say that. So so when you're being truthful, when you're being honest, when you're being authentic, and when you're being consistent, you're actually crafting a remarkable uh, brand that people can actually talk about at a barbecue. And when your story stays the same, You know, you give people an opportunity to repeat that story to others who've never heard it. How many stories of founders do you know, um, you know, from the start? You know, you know Steve Jobs' story. You know uh, Elon Musk's story. You know anybody's story. You know Mark Zuckerberg's story. He started off in a dorm room, invited people to come and join. And they said, nah, we don't believe that. Now he's got the murder vest. All right? So... If your story will stay the same and you won't have to keep, you know, trying to figure out, well, when did you lie or what did you say? You know, it it, it just helps you out like that. And once you've got all those pieces and components together, strong communication is important when you now become the leader. Because thought leaders need to know how to inspire their audiences and add value to their lives. You know, because credibility is essential um, in your voice because people are always seeking leaders to follow and to learn from. So if you're consistent in all the things that you say and you embody a persona that's um, sincere, people will actually, you know, be the pathway to your door. And before you know it, you become the most remarkable and uh, most referred to um, coach, consultant, or business owner in your niche, okay? I really, really, really want you to be successful. I really want you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And I know that you definitely can scale your business from where you are to greater heights. Okay, you can start creating a diverse recurring revenue stream that would literally skyrocket your profitability. And you would ensure that your business remains 100% bulletproof because you shield yourself from all the other me too uh coaches and consultants out there who definitely do not know um what it is that they're doing all right so here's what i want you to do i mean obviously you've been listening to my stuff or you've been checking us out um you know in our podcast or whatever it is i want you to start attracting highly qualified leads who actually want what you've got in less than an hour a week without you having to write a single ad or any traditional marketing that I was uh, telling you about there. So I want you to claim a free 30-minute business breakthrough call, all right? And on this call, we'll go through what your business looks like right now. We'll identify your target market. We'll clarify your message and then start determining what media you need to be using in order to a be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And the reason why we're doing this is because the more of us are out there actually helping our clients be, do, and have a happier existence, guess what? The more your business, uh, I mean, the more the world becomes a better place. 
I really want you to escape running a boring, typical business that amounts to nothing. And I want you to escape the trap of not having customers or not understanding why people are not buying from you each and every day. You know what I mean? You know, and if you're ready to escape that trap of working for money and being your client's slave, just strap yourself in. Book that call, you know, because I want you to be ready for your best year ever. And I know you deserve a successful, remarkable business that is profitable and enjoyable. All right. I'll see you on the other side. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the Live Long Digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.